You had no authority. None. Mexico City. What were you doing there? I was taking some overdue holiday. So we have just arrived in Mexico City, and I don't have to tell you which hotel we're in. If you saw the uh, pre-title sequence of Spectre, you know which hotel this is. Now, interestingly enough, these are the stairwells behind me where they actually walk up to go to the elevator, but the outside part, even though it looks like one shot, was filmed separately. We're gonna show you that later on in the trip. But let's go up the steps and see the pathway that Bond took. Come on. So they walk up these steps, there was a lot of people dressed for Day of the Dead. They were in costume, so was Bond and his wonderful female accomplice. And then they come here. Now let's talk about this elevator right here. This elevator is not just seen in Spectre, it's also seen in License to Kill. You see Bond go up there. So let's take a look at the elevator. <laughs> Elevators for guests only, so we're gonna press the button. and hope that the elevator comes. Oh, something's moving. So as we're sitting in front of here, none of this has changed. The glass hasn't changed, um, the metalwork hasn't changed. It's actually all the same. So it's amazing to stay in a hotel where two bonds have been filled. So this is interesting. You actually need an escort now to go up. So we're going into the elevator. And what Bond did was, I'm going to stand over there, he stood here against the wall like this. And can we go to the third floor? That's this. So we're going to the third floor. Now what you did is you saw in the film, we're videotaping this for a plot plot. So when we go to the third floor, what happens is you actually see the different levels. But we're gonna show you the different cut point that they do in the film, and then suddenly it's Pinewood Studios. So watch carefully. We're closing the doors. You can see the beautiful glass around us. And this is the approach you actually see in the movie over my shoulder. So they go up, they go up. And we're gonna get some shots later, but you'll see the ceiling and everything's absolutely beautiful. I mean, the metalwork, the glass. And then when they leave the door, so we're on the third floor. Yes. It doesn't exist. The room doesn't exist. That's right. That's true. It's uh, 327 and it does not exist in the movie, right? Okay, thank you. So they would have come over here, but um, like this gentleman was saying, that was not there. So that was then a cut and then it was pine. You can see there's elevators and sir, there's no room 327, is there? Yeah. So there is no room 327. We heard from this gentleman. Thank you, blessings. Um, so we're going to take a look around at this beautiful place, but the magic has just begun.
you come in the door, we have that canopy bed. And of course, you have the walkout to the balcony. There's really no balcony, but there's a door here somewhere. And then it overlooks Zokolo. Could not get a better room. Oh my gosh. What an unbelievable view. Totally geeking out right now. Really nice touch. Oh, yummy. <laughs> Another ride in the elevator, this time with champagne. Cheers! Yeah. And we are staying on the third floor. Yes. As close to room 327 as possible. Oh, didn't see that coming. This way, Mr. Be careful watching the step. Gracias. You'll be pleased to know your uncle has arrived. I put him in your suite. Uncle? Let's make this a proper family reunion. Give me a gun. Stay here. So this is a huge surprise, and this is the power of social media. So I was posting a lot of pictures um, of my trip to Mexico City, and good friend Omar, who we met, you followed uh, the Instagram, the videos, and things like that, right? Yeah. You, you raised your hand, and you said, hey, I could give you a tour. So first of all, this is Omar. Omar, thank you so much for doing this. You're welcome, David. My now, pleasure. This, this guy, not only, and I've always told you, this is the power of the Bond Experience community. Everybody is a friend, whether it's you know somebody here or somebody uh, across the seas in the United States. Everybody's connected by Bond, but you have a much deeper connection because you are actually in the film Spectre. In fact, you stood right here in the filming. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, actually, this was like the third day. I was not supposed to be here because I, I, I was an extra only in the street, but I gotta be here in all the days. So I came uh, on the cover, and as, as I had my, I had the, my ID, and they, I had this ID. So look at this. This is fantastic. So. I managed to come this, this day when they were shooting all the hotel stuff and I was up there and I was like, no, I can't be up here. I need to be down there so I can see some in this filming and I see Hoytemann, Hoytemann, all the guys. So one of the casting guys told us, who, who, which ones of you know how to waiter? Uh, how to be a waiter? And I was like, even though know. you've never done well, it. Of, of course, course. we would all do that. Yeah, so, so I came and they took us downstairs and it was awesome because they put me a bow tie and uh, a vest. Right. And so, so it feel like weird to be in a bond film with a, a bow bondish. tie. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah. It was awesome. The, the shoes were not my size, they hurt a lot and the, the, also the pants. But I kept that out of my mouth because it was awesome and I had all this, this big oh. thing with all the wine and yeah. I dropped it a lot of times. And I was standing right over here while Daniel Craig came and came through the, the elevator and went up. Oh my gosh. And originally the scene had a kiss 
there was a kid who shot him with a toy gun. Oh my gosh. Yes, and oh. uh, it was, it was, I thought it was a better idea. I liked yeah. it a lot because, but they, they couldn't have, well, the kid wasn't giving them the reaction they wanted. Uh. So they scrapped it and they went with the idea it was in the end, but it was original with the kid. Oh my gosh. And I thought it was really fun. And we were all day filming this, and I was saying, well, Sam was over here, and right. Barbara Broccoli was And, and you were here. saying, if we could just twist over here, you were saying that Sam Mendes was over on this area right here? Yes, they were. They, the monitors were over here, and Sam and Michael, they were all over here with the, all the film crew. And here, they were eating. This, it wasn't here. This area was open, and they had all the wardrobe there. Oh, okay. I, I changed there, over there. And Barbara was here eating, and all the extras were all over the place. And Michael right. Wilson was taking pictures all over here, and I got to talk to him. That was awesome. Oh and my gosh. yes, the whole, the whole, all the hotel was full with extras. Was right. filled with extras, but they only focused on this this part of the film, well, the of the hotel. So amazing. They only, they only shot like. So we're going to hear more stories from Omar. This is a treat. So we're not just going to see the sights. We're going to hear from an extra on the Spectre film. This was totally unplanned. That's what I love about it. It's spontaneous. This is the Bond experience. So now we're going to take a walking tour and see some of the Bond sights. Let's go. Okay. So clearly, we are in the Zuccolo, and what you just saw, if you come a little bit closer, is the avenue um, where they come up from, correct? Yes. Supposedly in the film, they, the building that, they, that he destroys, it's over there, and he runs through the, and you see all the dancers and all the stuff you go right. through, and that's that avenue. They shot the whole place, so no cars, anything. Shut down for shut two down. weeks? Yeah, so. like two weeks. Because they had one of the, the helicopters where they filmed some of the sky point of view. Oh yes. And it was parked over there and they had like these big heads, these big skull heads that you can see that it's a tradition in Mexico. Right. That are called Calaveras and Katrinas. And they had this big Katrina here, the one in the film with a, a live band. Sure. That they was playing alive and it was oh, yes. Wow. Yes, it was all the music was live. And yes, it was incredible. And you can see the helicopter coming through the, the buildings, right? Really low, incredibly low. And uh, then they had the stunt. And that, that was the best part. The best part was the stunt because the helicopter landed and went up, and it was like really low. And you can see the stuntmen fighting. Oh my gosh! And the first thing was awesome because everybody clapped. They we were we were shocked to see yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the stunt show that everybody clapped and they say please don't clap don't clap you're supposed to be in horror yes, of it all yes they, they explained that please don't do it and they understood that we were like whoa amazed because they did such a great job yeah yeah and yeah well then we we screamed in horror and sometimes actually it was kind of horrifying because you know a helicopter so close it yes. pushed you away and oh my gosh. yes and it was quite, quite a, it's a it's a small helicopter it's not bigger than a car but it's really powerful right. helicopter so so you could see you could see the stunt people on the side right yes actually the the, the guys in the front were stuntmen because they, they didn't let us be so close to the helicopter get right. an accident but it blew you away and yes it was really interesting and it was awesome yeah actually and, and you said life. something about they fed you well i love that little uh, yeah. detail you don't yeah, hear these we, things we like kings because i mean we had awesome breakfast, we had awesome food. They gave us this chocolate stuff that I called natillas that I ate all of them. Because <laughs> some people, actually, we were so so well fed that some people say like, no, we don't want more food. And they had a box where they put the food back. So oh if you gosh. wanted something, you could go. Yes, we, and we were all, had, they, they got, had this, they, they were these guys with these backpacks that they were, the ones that you use so you can spray poison to insects. Yeah. But they were filled with water. Oh, to make sure people yes. are hydrated. So they were like a team. Smart. Uh, everybody loved that team because, you know, they came from all over the place and you just had to raise a, uh, a cup and they came like five guys oh to serve you water. Yes. It, it, incredible production. You don't so. hear this in the making of. Well, let's, let's take a look around a little bit. So, strangely enough, they started to play the song that you actually hear in the elevator from Spectre. Very cool, but we're standing in the middle of the Zocalo on a crowded afternoon. Pretty auspicious.
Okay, so this is a really key area. Now we're nowhere near the hotel that we were just in. So this is about movie magic. But in the beginning, when it says the dead are alive, if you swing over this way and look down the street, this is where you would see that giant float with the guy with the cigar and it goes do 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 that's my best drum i can't do the drum that well but but omar walk us through here because we definitely see all of this in the movie it really doesn't look any different no actually well uh the scene there was a huge dolly track here so the camera started the the car was here so the camera was like this and uh, it starts it goes all this way sees the uh, the guy in the black in the white suit yeah right then, over there yeah right over there then it goes to bomb and then goes through all the way here and then it finishes on that door which is supposed to be the entrance to the hotel that's right and then it probably cuts there so here's what we're gonna do since we have omar and we know the exact pathway we're actually going to take the pathway that bond does in the film come on with us Okay, so here's the pathway. We're gonna come down this way. So they would have been walking. Yeah, you would have seen a, a side shot of them in the movie, I think, but now you're gonna have our backs. You know, it's amazing because they had lots of extras and costumes extra. Did you say close to 3,000 people? Yes, if I remember correctly, there were 3,500. My gosh. Yes, and they went more because they needed more at the last two days of shoot because everyone was tired and some people didn't come back. So they needed as much as they, they could have on the soccer level. Okay, um, so here's the door. Yeah, the, the door was open. And you can see the poster here. So the door was open, um, which is not open right now. We were hoping, but then you saw this poster on the wall. And you can tell if you're really good at uh, filmmaking, like Omar is, it goes like this, and that's probably a cut that they did. And then they were on the stairwell going up to the elevator. Where of course Omar was there. Omar was there because he had to be everywhere that there was filming. Now you, there's a story about this poster. You were, you were hoping to come away with one of these, right? One yes, of the big ones. All the extras wanted one of the big ones because they were all in all the the walls. So we wanted to take one of those, but the guys from the prof just looked at us and they were like, "It's not like, happening." Yes, yeah. And uh, later we wanted to come back, but the problem is our base camp was quite far away from so if you didn't take the bus you were in trouble because you had to walk and they need to stamp your your id right so we couldn't take one of the posters next bond film you're gonna walk right here yeah. you can have this as a souvenir <laughs> of the bond experience but then with your stuff all right let's take some more looks at this environment because we're close to some other bond locations Okay, so this is again more movie magic. Um, if we swing over to this way, this is Bond's walk when he comes out on the balcony. And if you take a look down this way, you can see Bond's entire stroll that he takes over to the building that he eventually blows up, which looks a little bit different now, but let's take a stroll down. And so Omar, um, tell us, this was built out though, correctly? There was like a false facade or something? Yes, it was an extra floor that didn't exist, that he came, came out, right. comes out and he walks and it was, there was a huge construction crane with a wire, well with his, his arm lift and a wire just for him for safety. Right. And he did a walk, he really did a walk, he came, he came out of the window, he walked all the way, he did a jump, and he did all the way, all the walk, all the way there. Like it was a just, it was half day that walk. And uh, that's the building he blows. Careful, there's steps here. And that's the building he blows up, and that's the, the building he comes down. And he ran a lot of times here. That's before he... he so to, is this where all the destruction was, and like you see all the debris and everything? Yeah. And he sees Scalera, and he's like, aha! Yeah. That's right here. It's over there, just where the blue guy is. Oh my that's God. supposed to be the, the, the place. And it was really cool, because you could see all the cop cars coming at us. Right, right. There was a, there's a, there was a huge Unimog that's not in the film, but it was really cool. That it took, had to be like really at the back because he couldn't stop on time. Right. And they, they, he did, they wanted to run over us, but... I'm glad he didn't. Yes. <laughs> so... Wow. Well, we're going to get a couple more shots of this because this is, this is a big filming area.
So if we kind of just walk over here, and you should take this tour too, you're gonna see that you see the building that Bond focuses on. So this was had a false facade, and obviously the building, which is now uh, not quite what you would see, but um, that's the one that falls down. They covered this area with debris, and then Bond runs into the area where the parade is happening. And of course you see different cuts on film, but this would have been the exact steps that Bond would have taken to get out to the main parade. And as a matter of fact, when you look from the top of this building, what's really cool about this is you actually see this little area. So it's not the, uh, we're nowhere near the Zuccolo. I mean, we're, we're a good like 10, 15 minute walk from there, but this is where you see all of the different aspects um, of the floats. And of course there's the statue, which with CGI they covered for some reason. Don't know why they covered that, but what's really, really interesting is this building right here is another Bond location, but from a different film, License to Kill. So did you know that the License to Kill building was in Spectre? We're gonna take a look right now. I was talk with them and at some point Hoyte knew, knew, about, knew me. And when I, yes, because that's, that's the one the first, I first approached. And he's Christopher Nolan's uh, director of photography. So I had to, I had to talk to, to Hoyte. So I talked to him and actually I gave, I had my, my, all my work on little USBs. So you can, you, you, I can give them to my favorite directors and they can plug in and see all my short films and commercials and stuff I've done. That's so, so I, smart to do that. He said this exact yeah. same thing over there. Yeah. So as you walk in, you're going to see the view that Sanchez and his cronies saw when they were in the Bank de Isthmus. Pause for a moment and take a look at this stairwell. I mean, this is so indelible and obvious from the film. You see this, this gaping maw of a stairwell here. Hard to believe this is a post office, but we've become close. This is the pathway. We love pathways. We just showed you some of the Daniel Craig ones. But this is the pathway they would have taken up the steps and around the corner with Sanchez making jokes about finances and banking the entire time. And of course, as they round the corner up there, that's when it cuts to a Pinewood Studios, all part of the movie magic, but you can see why they chose this amazing and beautiful historic building. And Omar, correct me if I'm wrong, this is a very old building, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, super, super old. Was it always a post office? Yes. That's incredible. Absolutely. Yeah, even when like storks were delivering, even before they had trucks. No, I, I don't even know what that means. But uh, we're falling in love with elevators in Mexico City, another beautiful elevator here. You see very quickly in the film but it's all in the detail. All right, so that's been a lot of touring and a lot of stories, thanks to Omar, but it continues. So we, you brought some goodies for us here. What, show us what you have here. Well, uh, when I got the casting call, cool. they asked us for uh, to be dressed as Katrina. So this is my my ID. That's my ID. You get one of those once you are accepted in the film, and they put some uh, seals on it for every day you go, and they sign it. Actually, it has uh, Sam Mendes and Hoytema and Hoytema signed over there at the end of the day. How did you get their signature? Because I seek, I seek them all over the place. He chased them. Yeah, I chased them, yeah. and they were kind of, and they, they he signed, Sam signed my my card and Hoyte too, and actually also the Gary Powell. Ah. I talked to him; he was really cool. And that's the picture I went to the casting. I went dressed as Katrina. I didn't uh, perform as Katrina. I performed as just a civilian. But you can see that, that was my idea. That the picture I had, yeah. and I had this number. That was my number in, when I when I shot. Every, well, it, so I could get an ID. And this is the this is the picture. Uh, is this like testing. a continuity shot or something like that? Or? Yeah, I had to be dressed all days like that, except the days I was a waiter because that was not planned. That was that was improvised. Well, they they bought some waiter 
clothes for me. Oh my gosh. And this was also for my wardrobe. And these are really cool. There were our snacks and This food. is hysterical. This is, this is how organized they are. Yes, they gave us this. all these. Uh, I don't know if you can see these, but. They were, they were uh, that's how you pay for a snack. When we were on city, they, all the, the catering people came and you gave them a snack or a, a first meal, second meal, or third meal. We get two snacks and three meals. Very three organized. Meals. That's so, a lot of food, actually. Yeah, a lot of food. There, there was always food left. Oh my gosh. Yes, everyone eats really cool. This was a uh, cone sheet. Okay, this is super cool. Yes, Michael Erman actually gave that, that one to me. And that's a cone cool sheet and that's really cool. And uh, behind there, there was a menu. That, that's the last day cone cool sheet. Unbelievable. And this, for example, this was, uh, this was the days I was supposed to be in. But I was all days in the film because I sneak in. He got it. And that's uh, the payroll calendar. This is how we knew about the casting. That's well, the this is interesting. So I asked this question of how do you even get to be an extra? And you said that they drop these around different uh, schools and colleges and things. Yes, all over the city. There was tents all over the city and they went to colleges and they gave you this so you can produce, to participate on the film. This never and happens in the United States. I've been looking. So I'll and these two. Oh, okay. this, that's what they bring you. That's what they give you so you can know what you were dealing with in the film. Yeah. And uh, there's some notes I took for the for my test, as, uh, the wardrobe test and some notes I took. And uh, well, the, pay, the payment Thank calendar, you. the days were going to be in. And this was the... They, you, when you take your picture, you had this sheet, so you had to fill it up. And that's how they keep your all the information so they can contact you. By the way, as a little bonus, because, because Omar is a local, he said, I said, what are the things we absolutely have to try here? So this is the um, steak taco right here yes. with cheese. And this is the El Pastor, which has pineapple juice that drizzles down into it. Pork, it's gonna be so adobo. good. It's, uh, it's pork with adobo, that is a uh, so special sauce. I think it's made with some chili. And uh, sometimes you get it served with pineapple, and sometimes you get it served with cilantro and or perfil, depends. It's gonna be good. And some onion. These are simple ones, and those are steak tacos. They're called the steak here with cheese. If you come to Mexico, the first thing you should try are those tacos. And at the Huequito, they're the best. This might be the most important part of the video. Bond thing aside, this is the most important thing. Yeah, everyone should try this when you come. Omar, I cannot thank you enough for today taking us around. I mean, first of all, it was special enough that you're local, you have so much passion. We were talking about uh, Mexico and, and really the need to bring back filming here and how special Spectre and, and other films were. But then to have you who are actually on the film do it, I want to thank you so much. You're welcome, my pleasure. And anytime you're in the United States, you have a place to stay. Come by, you see the museum, we'll take you on a tour. Philadelphia is not half as exciting as Mexico City, but we'll try. This has been David Zeritsky and Omar from Mexico City. We'll see you very soon. Take care. So what we have in front of us is Sanchez's headquarters. Now what's interesting here, in License to Kill, there's a lot of a lot of scenes with this facade. Now it's not a facade, it's an actual building. It's a theater right now. But one of the things is, it's a very narrow street. We're gonna show you how narrow in a second. And because of that, they had trouble filming a lot of the close-ups. So what did they do? Magic. They actually rebuilt this entire facade at Pinewood. So when you see Timothy Dalton in close-up actually climbing down it and putting the explosives, that's all movie magic. That's somewhere else in England. Um, here, this is where they did all the establishing shots, etc. It's a beautiful building. We're gonna take a close-up, but it is a Bond location. So we've got a little bonus. Um, as I was walking around, I noticed this, the Banco de Mexico which actually is the El Presidente Hotel from License to Kill. So just to get you really confused, the elevator that I showed you, the Spectre elevator, was the one that you see where uh, Bond goes into, uh, Timothy Dalton. But this is actually the exterior that they showed. They didn't show the exterior 
of the Grand Hotel, they showed this as the exterior of El Presidente Hotel. Um, but here it is in all its glory, and it's right by the post office. It's also about a block and a half away from the Spectre Square where the building blows up and the big parade. I mean, so really, if you spent about an hour in this general area, you'd see a ton of Bond locations. So I'm in my room right now, and this is definitely the calm before the storm. This is the Day of the Dead. Actually, technically, it's the Day of the Innocents, where people honor um, babies and children that have passed away. Tomorrow is the Day of the Dead, but it's all part of the Day of the Dead celebration. From the room, we can see the Zocalo, and um, it's really quiet. They're still kind of cleaning up in here, but a little bit later, this will be a madhouse of people dressed up in interesting costume, bands, and other affairs. So a real cultural event, even beyond the whole aspect of Spectre. So something to be seen. We are back from Mexico City. I cannot tell you what an incredible trip this was adequately. I mean, it was amazing. So no trip is perfect and no place is perfect. So two things about Mexico City that I, I did not like. There were these uh, barges, this barge trip that we went on. It was a bit of a, a tourist trap. It was supposed to be something we thought was very cultural, but it were these barges that just kind of went down this canal waterway. The canal waterway history is amazing, but the barges was really kind of a booze cruise and everybody on there was just drinking. It was like one of those catamaran booze cruises you might find in the Bahamas. So not our cup of tea. That's just one. The other one was we wandered into this zoo, um, kind of in the middle of Mexico City when we were walking. And it is by far the saddest zoo I've ever seen. It was run down. The animals looked sick. The enclosures were really small. They, they looked sad. The people walking around looked sad. It was, it's what I call the sad zoo. But that's it. Everything else was incredible. The food in Mexico City was amazing. So flavorful, so vibrant, so colorful, just like the culture. The culture is amazing. Um, the people. The people were so warm and so giving of their time. Not just Omar, but of course we have to thank Omar. But just everybody that we ran into, um, certainly not just a part of the hotels and the tourist areas, but everywhere. Uh, some of the kindest, most gentle, most giving people uh, we've met, and we've met a lot of different cultures. Um, so I highly recommend Mexico City. I mean, all the locations are within a six to eight block radius. I mean, some of them are far outside the city, but most of them are very close. So from a James Bond standpoint, it's amazing. I even picked up some souvenirs that you can kind of uh, see in the background of, of the Spectre Parade. And I highly recommend it, not just for the Day of the Dead, but for an amazing trip. Anyway, I know this has been a double long one. I know that we filmed this on my iPhone because quite frankly, I didn't want to lug all my equipment on my vacation. Remember, it's still my vacation. So sorry about any sound or visual quality. I'm sure I'll, I'll see your comments. But I hope this gave you an idea of James Bond's Mexico City, all the amazing flavors that it comes with. And this has been David Zaritsky for the Bond Experience. We'll see you very soon. Take care. Oh, hey, you're still here. Hi. Didn't even know. Uh, you listen, while you're here, uh, if you want, I, I, so I would actually go to this button right here and click on it because then you actually subscribe to our blogs. It's amazing. Um, you get to see all the upcoming stuff first. You get notifications. It screams at you while you're at work. It's absolutely amazing. Just click on this button, hit subscribe. Just move your cursor, move, 